So my name is Craig Barr. I work with the Enterprise Group at Epic Games with Unreal Engine. I'm going to talk about visualization with Unreal Engine and really quickly how we work at Epic Games with Unreal Engine and all of these different spaces. So what is the enterprise space within Unreal Engine? We'll look at a little bit of that in a, a bit of a, a branch off thing in a moment, but we focus on four major areas. So architectural engineering and construction, or AEC as it's commonly known as, manufacturing and design, including product design, vehicles, automotive, Film and television, you've probably seen a lot of really exciting stuff going on like uh, lately with Unreal Engine in that space, and training and simulation. I'm going to be focusing, everything I talk about today is applicable to all of these areas, but I'm going to be using architectural uh, examples in my, my presentation here. So just a real quick, um, you may have seen this before, but this is a bit of a, a, a sizzle reel sampling some of our our work involved in all the different industries here, and I'm getting a bit of a stutter. It's probably because I'm running the, the game in the background here, uh, which is, let me just flip to that guy there. Anyways, I'm just gonna move forward here. This, so our, I've got a game running in the background. Actually, it's this. We're gonna take a look at it at the end with some real-time ray tracing. But just really quickly, what the vision is with our, within our enterprise group with Unreal Engine for visualization. We typically, what we have are these five main focuses here for this vision. We want Unreal Engine as a development platform to be a marketplace for you, where you get into one place and aggregate all of this data together, the ability to access our robust marketplace as well if you need other assets or other data, places that you can put your assets and data in there as well. But Unreal Engine is, as a development platform, a place to bring all of your data in and be able to work and create whatever it is you need to be able to create. So at the end of the day, Unreal Engine works as this single asset or this, this Uber development platform to help you uh, get to the goal that it is that you want to get to. And one of the cool things that we have going on lately, and we keep adding more and more to this, is this ability for collaboration. So with Unreal Engine, one of the cool things that you'll see uh, since the, the last release there with 4.22 is the ability to actually have people from anywhere on the planet inside your viewport collaborating on a design. So it doesn't matter what the data is. It could be architectural data or uh, automotive data. You have the ability to be right inside Unreal Engine with other designers, artists, developers from around the world in the viewport collaborating on that design and reviewing that design together. Um, and at the end of the day, really what Unreal Engine is, is it provides the tools for you to create what it is that you want to create. And it shouldn't matter where that data comes from. You should be able to do whatever it is that you want to do with that data uh, quickly and create beautiful work uh, within Unreal Engine as an overall development platform. So just really quickly here, Unreal Engine uh, as a complete solution. Um, with Unreal Engine, we, we have the ability to be, you can be an in-depth developer, programmer uh, within Unreal Engine and get in there and use things like C++ programming or Python or you can not have to use any of that. The great thing about working in Unreal Engine is you don't have to keep writing scripts or jumping in and, and programming things or writing out scripts that maybe things that you're, uh, an artist might not be comfortable with. Uh, Unreal Engine is very artist friendly. We have a very robust visual scripting system that we call Blueprint that allows people to create complex code in a node-based system. Um, the great thing about Unreal Engine, of course, this isn't something that has just been started over the last couple of years. We're coming up to 30 years at Epic Games has been around, and Unreal Engine has been, uh, been production proven here for a couple of decades now. Um, and we certainly see that, of course, in the game space. Um, what the goal here with Unreal Engine that we continue to pu push is our photorealism. We keep bringing that performance up and raising that performance. Um, again, I mentioned the collaboration tools that we have, that ability to have people from remotely jump into your design data within the viewport in Unreal Engine and be able to work together. It's, that's a pretty impressive workflow. We've, we're adding more in that in our next release there as well. We always are adding a little bit to, to up the uh, fundamentals of the functionality of these different things. And another cool thing, we'll come to this in a little bit here with the public source code. Um, this is the code that's available for Unreal Engine. We'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later. And one of the coolest things here, of course, is that it's free to use. You can go grab Unreal Engine right now, download it, it's completely free. If you sign up for Unreal Studio Beta, you get Unreal Engine with our Datasmith plugin that allows you to bring all the CAD data or complex non-game data into Unreal Engine and be able to create whatever it is that you want to create. And this leads me to this point here, this idea of one asset, many uses. 
you know, quite often in other engines out there, you know, sometimes you go down a pathway of what a client wants. Maybe they want beautiful imagery or they want some sort of an immersive experience, but often you get kind of pigeonholed in that direction. The amazing thing with Unreal Engine is bring your assets in and be able to create whatever it is you want, whether it's beautiful high-res imagery or beautiful video or an immersive experience or developing a standalone application that works as an interact interactive walkthrough, you know, like a gamification of things, um, or if it's creating uh, different, you know, mixed reality, augmented virtual reality experiences. At any time, you can go in any direction and create these things uh, in Unreal Engine very easily and quickly. So we're just going to take a look at this here. I'll jump into these five spaces really quickly, how Unreal Engine is transforming the AEC industry, or for that matter, all of these different industries that we're seeing uh, Unreal Engine uh, as part of. So immersive design, this is the ability to take complex CAD data or simple data, whatever the data may be, have a library of that data and actually step inside the space, experience the scale of it, and build and design and place objects in context to the actual set of things, whether it's a real existing set or it's a design plan that's happening. And this allows people to get immediate feedback and of course it enhances creativity. So we'll take a quick look at a sample there of of using some products and pieces of some blind here in a very simple setup here where they're able to just step through and, and be able to create some things in there. So visual communication here, this is this idea of simplifying complexity. So what we end up seeing here is this ability to actually want to visually communicate what's happening in a scene here. So in this example here, we have this idea of building a railroad uh, through an urban area that actually impacts a, a local school so that we can visually see what's happening with that. Before I play that video, I'm just gonna shut down my little uh, game here, my little real-time ray tracing game that I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna show here at the end. We'll have some fun with ray tracing on that. But this idea back here with visual communication, this idea of experiencing the design before we even get to that part of the actual physical design, and that we can see the impact that this might have on um, a scenario, in an urban scenario here, and also visualize how this might be constructed over time as well, so that we can actually experience that in a virtual sense long before the actual you know, boots hit the ground, so to speak. So you saw that little demo that I'm gonna show at the end there, um, this idea of perfect pixels. You know, with Unreal, we're doing a lot of stuff these days, of course in the real-time space, but as well with real-time ray tracing. Um, this really brings in an, an additional level of physical reality. Um, we have this ability to communicate emotion with that, that beautiful physical reality in there, you know, whether it's dramatic lighting or a dra dramatic scene that we might have that really communicates or conveys that emotion within a design. Um, and of course, less waiting, more creating in the end, faster is cheaper, right? So if we can create something beautiful and compelling very quickly and put it out there, uh, this is a great way to work. And in the end, it might even, it, it usually ends up winning people a lot more work. So uh, we'll come back to some of Kenichi's work here in, in a moment. He, he's created some amazing visualizations for some, uh, some uh, this cafe that we'll take a look at in a moment as well. So another area that we see a lot of the the, uh, the use of Unreal Engine within the architectural space is this, this other niche here that we're seeing with virtual selling. So we're actually seeing the people, the ability to test drive a home, whether it's a designer test driving the design or the layout of a home, or it's a customer that actually can walk through and experience their home. Uh, we have customers that have uh, set up full virtual immersive uh, applications that people can walk through, customize their own home, and per complete the sale of that home all in virtual reality and actually purchase a home long before construction's even begun. And the really interesting thing, this bottom point here about emotional connections, we often hear this, that we see people that go in, they, they customize their virtual home long before the construction's begun and they get excited about those things, those little uh, details that they've added to it. You know, we can do this remotely via a mobile device or of course, in a virtual reality sense there as well, on site maybe at a sales office that might be po a pop-up sales office. So the last point on that uh, area there of how, it's, how we're seeing Unreal Engine or real time transform the AE AEC space, we're seeing this ability to take large data sets with complex data overlaid and be able to bring this in so we get this idea of these smart cities in here, right? Data in context, simplifying the aggregation of all different types of layers of data and detail, 
and so that we get this idea of this accelerated understanding into whoops accelerated understanding into a, a space here I'm just going to play this little video here of this here so we have an interactive display where people are able to look at a massive city set and overlay different data pieces on top of that to understand how that city might work or how we might have environmental implications on things. And of course, this ability to interact with this and layer over comp even more complex data, understanding traffic patterns, uh, putting in different layers of AI, whatever it may be, to understand how it might something, an urban project might be affected. So I talked about the enterprise area of, of Unreal Engine and how we work in these different spaces and how we handle data that comes in the non-game sense. Let's take a look at what that's about. If you've heard of Unreal Studio, you've probably heard of this up here, Datasmith. And that is our plugin that we've created that allows you to bring data from just about anywhere. So complex architectural data, automotive data, it can be data from anywhere. And we support all the major formats out there. This is just a sampling of a few of them. We're always adding more. Recently, we just uh, added full support for Cinema 4D in there. But you can see on the CAD side of things, we have things like SketchUp. We've been supporting Revit since uh, early last fall. Um, you can see all the different types here, you know, uh, SolidWorks, Inventor, whatever it may be that you need to, to visualize or do something with the design of that or interact with. You can bring it into Unreal Engine as Unreal Engine supports that. So how do we do that? Well, really briefly, our CAD importer with the Datasmith plugin is actually more than just simply a CAD importer takes care of all the pain points behind the scenes. So what we get in the end of the day is importing files from all the major CAD uh, software developers out there. And I mentioned a bunch of, of them there. You can go online, there's an ever-growing list of all the different formats that we support in there. Um, but in the background, it will do that conversion, that tessellation of, of complex surfaces or NURBS data, whatever it may be. It will also transfer over all the product structure, the naming conventions, the metadata that may be set with that data and it will preserve that accurately as a designer would expect to see it within Unreal Engine. Um, and the great thing as well is these re-import workflows. Literally just right click and simply re-import if design has changed on one component or several components of the data and it will preserve its position and its uh, proportion within its space in Unreal Engine. Uh, and of course it generates Unreal Engine native assets automatically behind the scenes for you. It takes away all that pain point of translating CAD data and bringing it in very quickly and exactly how you would expect to be able to work with it as well. Unreal Engine with the, uh, on the Unreal Studio side with Datasmith, we also provide some additional tools. So the ability to work with data preparation or how you might want to fix some of those little annoying things that maybe came over on the CAD data. You know, maybe it might be flipped faces or flipped normals or maybe a hole in a face or missing faces there. Um, we have ways that we can work with those. Of course, creating automatic levels of detail uh, is easy. It happens, auto you can have it automated with Datasmith, or you can create your own manual levels of detail of very complex, large data sets. Um, the ability to merge actors or objects and models, building proxies of things, and the ability to remove complex little pieces if we're not going to see them through a process of what we call defeaturing. You know, those little things, you might have a bolt but it might be, you know, there might be several thousand of them across an object. And for the visualization of the project, maybe you're not going to see that. We can very quickly with Datasmith identify that, remove that or hide that away from the scene. Jacketing is the process of if we have something complex inside something, maybe a big motor or an engine, we can hide away all those components that we're not going to see and, and focus on the out, outside case so that we're preserving the accuracy of it and lightening the load on the scene. And all of this can happen in an automated sense uh, through Datasmith. And we, of course, also have the ability to add Python scripting into there to automate it to do whatever it is you, you want it to do as well. So the Variant Manager um, within Unreal allows you to create different variations of, of sets. In this example here with architectural data, you know, we might want to create a variation of a setup as to how that is set up in a scene. Um, maybe, it, maybe it's changing different lighting scenarios or it's swapping out different furniture or fabrics in the scene, whatever it may be, to set up uh, perhaps a, a different uh, variation or configuration of a design. We can stack up all these different variants so that people can quickly click through them or adjust them or customize them to whatever it is they, they want to do on there. The other thing that's very cool about the way that we work with Unreal Engine is we're always providing very simple starting points. So with this idea of our project templates, 
And with 4.23 that's, that's coming out, we're actually ex expanding this as well. We're combining a bunch of these templates and adding some more functionality in there. But we have these starting points. So if someone needs to jump into Unreal Engine and they want to create a VR experience really quickly, these project templates are an excellent way to start. Or maybe it's an exploded view of a complex piece of CAD data. Uh, our templates are, can help you very quickly do that and, and set how you want to work with that or visualize that with simple things like x-ray shading or whatever it may be. The, pro the purpose of the templates are a place to just jump in with your data and get going really quickly. So why use Unreal Engine? I've talked about all these different pieces that come within our enterprise space. You know, for example, with Datasmith as a plugin to be able to bring over complex data. But why else use Unreal Engine? Well, we know that Unreal Engine is leading the way with its real-time rendering, creating beautiful renders. So let's just take a look at a couple of samples here from some of our customers. This is the one we'll have some fun with here at the end of this here in a moment. Um, this is uh, some of the work by Kenichi. We saw some of this before. He said some amazing stuff. All of this is in real, using real-time ray tracing uh, in Unreal, and he's using this to visualize a uh, design of a cafe here so that we're seeing some, some beautiful renders happening here uh, of the, the, his cafe design or layout of that uh, environment. Um, so we'll check through here some, some other architectural renderings here that we're getting, some interior design, um, the ability to, to showcase maybe different lighting scenarios or beautiful furniture in there. Um, all of these, of course, we're seeing in a video format, which is very easy to output. With a, you, know, you can do it with a single camera or any number of endless, unlimited number of cameras to be able to create a beautiful visualization live out of Unreal Engine. This can be created into a virtual reality experience. We could create, uh, take objects and place them into a scene into an augmented reality experience, or we can create beautiful visuals or imagery, whatever it may be that we want to work with. Uh, this is uh, our friends uh, at Zone over at, uh, in uh, Finland who actually recreated Helsinki so that you could experience a virtual Helsinki in full virtual reality from anywhere on the planet. Um, and it's a huge data set. And they created a lot of really nice uh, scenarios there so that you can actually experience Helsinki without actually being in Helsinki. So you keep hearing these terms of real-time ray tracing. So this, I've just put two images back to back of, of a scenario here where we're seeing real-time ray tracing versus no real-time ray tracing. So very quickly, here's our real-time ray tracing scene. The biggest thing that we're looking at is the realism on the reflections, the shadows, um, how the surfaces are working with things like ambient occlusion, and of course, real-time ray tracing works into things like realistic glass, translucency on glass. So here's no real-time ray tracing. And if we just get, kind of do a bit of a switch back and forth, and if we look at things like the, the pot and the cooktop here and the floor, and we just see what we're getting back and forth from that. So real-time ray tracing is bringing in the, the real accurate bouncing of all these reflections in here. We're getting some reflection on the, the surfaces of the cabinetry here, and we're getting proper real-world reflectivity of all the different objects in the scene there as well. So it definitely brings up the realism of that scene overall. So of course it goes without saying, with platforms, with Unreal Engine, we support, you know, it, it just becomes an infinite number of platforms because we have to. We have to support where you want to develop to. So, you know, I'm not going to name them all out at the bottom there, but you can see that this list is ever growing and we're always supporting what is coming next uh, uh, along the curve. So C++ code access. So this is, I mentioned this before, we actually have our source code. It's free and available on GitHub. So someone that wants to actually customize Unreal Engine to their own liking, they can grab the source code to Unreal Engine there and uh, be able to do uh, customize Unreal Engine to their liking or their needs for whatever the project is. Uh, community resources, just really quickly, we have a really robust learning library online now, professional authors, all free. We have an amazing markets, marketplace where you can grab anything from free content to purchase content. You can sell your content on there as well. Grab code, materials, whatever it may be to help you with your project. I mentioned before about this idea of an artist-friendly coding system, and this is our visual scripting system that we call Blueprint within Unreal Engine. It works in this node-based setup, so you can access math and functionality, or functions for that matter, uh, to be able to create very complex um, programming in a very visual and easy and quick and easy to use uh, sense. 
So just uh, quickly here, the adoption of Unreal Engine, you know, with surveys that we've had, we're seeing that Unreal Engine uh, out there is the most used engine for experimenting with real-time rendering, so that we're seeing that Unreal Engine overall is the engine of choice for people to experiment and jump into the real-time rendering world. You know, over seven and a half million Unreal Engine downloads out there. I mentioned Unreal Studio with Datasmith. Again, that's fully free as well. You know, we're at, uh, we're probably at this point nearing 300,000 Unreal Studio registrants now as well. Another thing that we've done recently to extend the architectural offerings within the Unreal space is the acquisition of Twinmotion, which brings with it uh, the simplicity or the ease of use using Unreal Engine, but it has a very simple UI over top. Bring your data in, create beautiful visuals, get the data out, as opposed to Unreal Studio where you have all the access to everything, all the in-depth access to get everything there. Um, so I'm going to say thanks uh, for coming by. I will be doing another presentation as well on Twin Motion, as I mentioned there. Um, I believe that one is at 4 p.m. So if you come by for that to, to see what Twin Motion's about, I hope to see you then. In the meantime, make sure you grab a beer and some popcorn and check out what else is going on. Thanks, guys.